In our second exercise, we will observe the corn kernel color and shape. The ear of corn is the F2 generation of hybrid parents. They are the F1 generation. In the P generation, one parent was homozygous for purple and smooth kernels and the other homozygous for wrinkled and yellow kernels. In a dihybrid cross, two traits are studied simultaneously. Our hypothesis is that these genes are inherited independently from each other, meaning that they are not linked. In the case of the corn dihybrid cross with purple, which is indicated by a capital P, and yellow kernels, which is indicated by a lower case P, and smooth, which is indicated by a capital S, and wrinkled, which is indicated by a lower case S, kernels for different phenotypes are possible. These combinations are 1. Purple and smooth 2. Purple and wrinkled 3. Yellow and smooth 4. Yellow and wrinkled I am going to fill in the dihybrid cross for you. Please check out my separate video where I show how a dihybrid cross is set up. If these traits follow Mendelian inheritance, we would expect a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 phenotypic ratio in the offspring. That is, 9 sixteenths of the offspring would be expected to have both the dominant traits, purple and smooth, 3 sixteenths would have one dominant and one recessive trait, for example purple and wrinkled, and another 3 sixteenths would be yellow and smooth, and 1 sixteenth would have both recessive traits, thus their phenotype would be yellow and wrinkled. Now that you know what we are expecting, you will identify the shape and color of the corn kernels in 10 rows of your ear of corn or at least 100 kernels and record your observations. In this example, we categorized 170 corn kernels, of which 95 were purple and smooth, 31 were purple and wrinkled, 33 were yellow and smooth, and 11 were yellow and wrinkled. Out of the 170 corn kernels, we expect 9 sixteenths to be purple and smooth, 3 sixteenths to be purple and wrinkled, and another 3 sixteenths to be yellow and smooth, and 1 sixteenth to be yellow and wrinkled. By multiplying the total number of corn kernels with 9 and dividing through 16, we calculate 95.625 out of 170 kernels should be purple and smooth, 31.875 to be purple and wrinkled respectively yellow and smooth, and 10.625 to be yellow and wrinkled. Our null hypothesis is that genes are not linked and thus there is no significant difference between observed and expected frequencies. We can then calculate the chi-square value by summing the squared difference between the observed and expected number of offspring for each phenotype divided by the expected number of offspring for that phenotype. That is, chi-square equals the sum of the observed frequency minus the expected frequency to the power of 2 and then divided by the expected frequency. We can then compare the chi-square value to a critical value or p-value from a chi-square distribution graph with n minus 1, degrees of freedom, where n is the number of possible phenotypes. So, how do we calculate the degrees of freedom? In this case, there are four possible phenotypes, so n equals 4 and there are n minus 1, which equals 3, degrees of freedom. The p-value or critical value is chosen based on the desired level of significance. A value is considered significant if there is less than a 5% probability meaning p is smaller than 0.05 then the results are attributable to chance. We will use 0.05 indicated by the red dotted line. If the chi-square value is greater than the critical value, we reject the null hypothesis that the observed results fit the expected results and conclude that the results are not due to chance. If the chi-square value is less than the critical value, we accept the null hypothesis and conclude that the results are not significantly different from what we would expect based on Mendelian inheritance.
By applying the chi-square formula, we calculated the chi-square result of 0 0.081. Now we are using this chi-square result to check if our result is significantly different from what we would expect based on Mendelian inheritance or if the variation is due to chance. At first, we identified the degrees of freedom line. In our case, we have three degrees of freedom and this is the green line. Now we find the chi-square value on the x-axis. Remember, this was 0 0.081. From there we find the corresponding p-values on the y-axis for 3 degrees of freedom. As you can see, the p-value is above the threshold and chi-square value is less than the critical value indicated by the red arrow at about 7.5. We can accept the null hypothesis and conclude that the results are not significantly different from what we would expect based on Mendelian inheritance.